Good morning and welcome to 101010 at Poets House, the poetry library in downtown New York City. Poets House is the place for poetry, poets, and all things verse. I'm Dave Johnson, poet and playwright and your host of 101010, where we invite you at 10 a.m. on weekdays for 10 minutes to write a new poem. And in 10 days, you'll have 10 new poems. Good morning and welcome to 101010 Community Anthology, where we're going to read some of these incredible poems that you've sent in. I want to thank you again for all of the responses. I mean, this stack just gets bigger and bigger. I mean, it's amazing how many poems you guys are writing and sharing. And they are so inspirational, right? So many different subject matters. You've taken this thing and gone. Some of you guys, I've written four or five lines in my little poems, and you guys are writing 10, 20 lines, you know, 40 lines. It's amazing what you're doing. So I want to share a few uh, again with you this morning from episode five. This is uh, the Audre Lorde episode, right, when we, we read some of her work. I just want to share with you, um, this one is uh, by Sharice Francis, I'm supposed to say. And I know Sharice has a lot of, uh, of poems in this collection as well. Um, where is this poem? I just saw it just a second ago. Yes, here we go. Oh, man. I think I've lost it, Sharice. Where did I just see your poem? Oh, here it is. Here we go. Yes, all we have is what she calls it. I'm supposed to say everything will return back to normal, but I'm not so sure. It will or it should. All we have is today, the air and blood that circulates in our bodies, the longing for another's embrace or kiss that circulates in our souls. We took for granted that it would always be as we rushed through the mundane of places, bodies, and lives, as all life became currency, swept up in the rapids of our own image, the world becoming a blur in the background of our own theater of security, of endless growth and greed. We have forgotten to cherish, to understand the ground which made us and to which we will one day return. Sharice, wow, that's fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful poem, right? Sophie Tucker writes, I'm supposed to say, sorry, we drifted apart, but I lie. You plunged an arrow through my heart, bled profusely, still on the mend, afraid to be broken again. Wow, wow, fantastic. Incredible rhyme in that poem, too. Really, really nice. Nice, nice work there. Uh, this one is by Luke, right? Luke says, this is my first submission. He wrote a little note with his, especially during this time. This is so important to me. Thank you for all you're doing. Thank you, Luke, for your poem. This is called Looking Up. I am supposed to say I've always loved you, although I didn't understand the word. When to appreciate a sky that will only change where to learn of gratitude for sleet and stain. Parents have many roles to play. A seedling has just one. Growing through storms, they may not know until they're done. Wow, wow, beautiful, beautiful work. Again, some wonderful rhythm you guys are creating out there. Incredible stuff. This one is by Janet called The Visit. I'm supposed to say I loved your gift. And I did. As I stowed this well-meant china piece away until... Or in case you come again, then I'll unwrap it anew, carry it by its cool, frilly edges to my Danish modern coffee table, admire its oh-so-pretty pink patterns, and fill it with sweets. Thank you, Janet. The visit. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's see what's in the next one. This one is the next series that we did. Uh, these little moment series. Wow, some people even put a photograph. This is a photograph poem. You guys created the photograph after Margaret Atwood's poem, right? Some really wonderful pieces in here too, right? Let's see what we have too. Claudia writes, Aperture. This is a photograph of me, or rather how I'd like you to see me. Here I am in this mirror, styled and framed by steady medieval hands, a long witness to prayer and crime. Famine and blood, that now must frame me. You see me altered by light, pulvered stone silt, the rarefied air of wormwood, crosses and tempera garments rubbed thin through the ages. And here I am caught, gold-leafed, and quilted by this camera's moment of empathy. Very, very nice. Very nice. 
Let's see what else we have here. So many wonderful pieces. So many amazing, amazing work. This one by Myra Shapiro. Myra. This is a photograph. At 23, I stride beside my husband on 42nd Street in New York City. Up here from Chattanooga, Tennessee. His first time here, my first job as a tour guide for a place I love, for a man I love, a first picture of where I want to be. You can see it fits. Together, we are beautiful, as confident as models on a runway. Times Square is ours. His tie waving in the wind, my pumps high-heeled, securely fastened each step, the first act that for 64 years will frame our play. Wow, that's beautiful, Myra. Fantastic work. Wow, this one. This one is by Nancy Bergman. There is a photograph of me the day I was born. I'm in my mother's arms. Her beautiful pink nightgown, her smile, her deep, happy dimples. I remember her looking at me for the first time. Sounds crazy. I was just born into this world. Third child, third girl, the trifecta of feminism. That was a long time ago. She looked at me knowing, I love you, child. I heard her feel. She was so young. I was her blessing. She mine. Losing a parent is like having a child changing life forever. Wow, Nancy Bergman. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. Gerald Harris. He wrote a lot of poems in here, too. Post office photo, he says. His eyes narrowed slits of hate betray the mustache smile that presides above a stubbed chin, jutting defiance over the emboldened phrase, stating in stark capital letters at the bottom, wanted, dead, or alive. Wow, wow, fantastic work, fantastic work. Let's see what else we got here. We have so many, so many that you guys have sent in. Corey Cooper, this one is the memory poem, In Memory of Triumph, right? For saying no, for saying yes, for finishing first, for finishing last, for hanging back, for giving in, for resisting, for trying something new, for staying the same, for going out, staying in, for sleeping, for staying awake, for attacking, for withholding, for loving, for staying alone, for making the choice I would not take back. Corey Cooper, that's a, that's a beautiful piece too. I love the rhythm that's created in that poem. It's fantastic. Incredible, incredible work. Nayana has sent so many poems too. This one is dreams that were young, dreams that are old, dreams that were going, dreams that are cold, dreams I have frittered, dreams I have sold, dreams yet still living, dreams I still hold. Nice. And Gina, Gina Turner, in memory of the kitchen, we dipped spiky leaves into melted butter. We dipped steamed clams too. We dipped crusty Kaiser rolls filled with well-done roast beef in au jus. We dipped cornmeal smelts into jarred tartar sauce. We dipped and chewed and laughed and overate. We dipped into each other's days at the crossroads of the kitchen table. Wow. Woo! Uh, you, know, you know I like that. It's about food. I'm, I go crazy for those, right? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. These are so wonderful. Guys, this, this is just a, a, a pleasure to read all these poems. And we're going to try to get everybody in. You know, we want to read a little bit of everybody. And this one, okay, this one is, of course, another food poem. I think this was when we did the anthology of food poems. And then we're going for lunch, okay? We've got to go for lunch soon. So, all right. That's, I had the anchovy pasta poem. I know you remember that. I hope you've tried to make some anchovy pasta. Even if you don't like anchovies, you should try you should. These are, these are amazing. Wow. This one sounds great. Oh, my goodness. Let's see who wrote this one. This is Ode to Peach Cobbler at Make My Cake Harlem, 2002, at Make My Cake. That was a place. This is by Jim. Mm-hmm. All right, Jim. Let's see what you got. Discovering Make My Cake Bakery, 2002, exploring Harlem for a new abode. There I was for the first time on legendary Strivers Row, 139th between 7th and 8th Avenue. Make my cake just around the corner. Cozy in its obscurity. Convincingly yummy, even staring in from the street. The enclave of matriarchal warmth cared little. My unused too. They knew that the moment I tasted my first bite, 
of their otherworldly peach cobbler, I would be a member of the family. And so I am. Wow, nice Jim. Nice, wow. I love it. Peach cobbler in Harlem. That is fantastic. That's fantastic. You know, when I first moved to New York, I lived in, in, uh, in Harlem too, not east side, the west side. It was at 119 in Amsterdam, right about Morningside Park. Yeah, it was wonderful. And and that 125th Street, I, you know, it was heaven. It was food. Everything was food. All right here we go. Okay, here's here's potatoes. Okay, by Marianne Donnelly. My grandmother loved you. Of course, she's Irish. You say she'd peel you each afternoon, lovingly removing your brown suit, revealing your yellow white flesh, stealing a slice in her mouth every fifth one. Always faithful to you. Fried in the morning, glistening in oil, boiled for dinner, topped off with butter, every day, every night, never unfaithful, never succumbing to passion with pasta or a romance with rice. Did she cling to you like a talisman? Superstitious fears of abandonment, folk fear of the famine, promising love and loyalty in return for a promise of plenty. Wow, the potato. That is fantastic. Thank you, Marianne. These are beautiful. Listen. We're going to read some more next time. Join us again for the Community Anthology. And thank you, thank you again for all of your generosity, for your poems, for being there, for being with us, for all of your letters. And until next time, we'll see you again. 10, 10, 10 Community Anthology. Be well. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give even a small donation if you can. Thank you.